Hey everyone, it's Tommy from TechNexus, and thanks for joining me on a new week uh, of videos. Last week uh, on the Friday, I briefly covered uh, Dyno and Advanced Steel, uh, how to get it installed, and how to look at a couple of the nodes for 2020. And, and for this week, I'm going to do two or maybe even three uh, samples that uh, I've utilized in the past. And using Dynamo, and uh, these are would be for projects where uh, they're kind of repetitious. So one of them will be kind of a, a portal frame kind of structure. So it could be a warehouse or even just a small building or whatever. Um, but basically, we're going to set up the script. So what we have to do is import a few figures, and and most of the the structure is drawn for us, uh, and then we just have to throw some connections in. So. Uh, if you haven't already installed the Dynamo for Advanced Steel plugin, it will be in uh, in your Autodesk Application Manager, uh, or just have a look online for it. So we go once it's installed, we go to the add-ins, and before I dig into the the sample that I want to look at, is I just wanted to have a look at uh, you know some of the samples as well that are within um, the Dynamo interface itself. So. One of them here is it's already called a, a portal frame and it looks quite complex and when you do get into it, uh, it it shows bracing and it shows a few other bits and pieces. So you can, you know, to teach yourself, you could go through and, and have a look at what each of these uh, groups or nodes actually does. So you can see this one's got purlins in it as well, but the one I'm going to show you doesn't, uh, but it's just the basic sort of uh, layout of, of the frame itself. So that's the, the portal frame sample. Uh, another one you can look at is the bridge. And one of the samples I'm going to do is, is, is a bridge as well, but Again, it's just very basic in, in the way that it's it's created, um, but it's not uh, you know it's not this level. The one I'm going to do has more of an arch on it, and then we can adjust the values of the arch and the, and the radius and all that kind of stuff. But if you're so inclined, you can uh, you know use this as a basis for your project as well. Okay, so for our one, I'm just going to you load up Dynamo and click on New and we're presented with a blank interface. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna go back to Advanced Steel, I'm gonna close this drawing, because what's gonna happen is eventually we'll get to the point where in the Dynamo script we are adding members, and then as we run those scripts, then they will appear in here as well. So uh, not necessarily, we won't get into that today, um, but for today I just wanna get uh, things started uh, and sort of give you a uh, bit of an idea on how all this works. Now, if you've been following me the last few years while I was working at Autodesk, I did an article on this on LinkedIn, and it was a three uh, three articles. It was basically sort of one one big one, and it talked about going through each of these uh, steps individually, and then at the end of that, you basically have your script. So this is kind of a refresher of that same script. Uh, that was done, I think, back in 2016 or even 2017 days. And now this is in 2020. And there are a couple other extras in here, but basically we're going to go through and redo that script again in 2020. If it's if you're new and you wanted to, to, to see how all of this works, again, just follow through for the next few days and you will see uh, how you can get started with Dynamo and uh, Advanced Steel to, to automate some of, these, um, some of these scripts. So what I... The way I like to do it is that I sort of work out um, what I need sort of in regards to the variables. So the variables are just the user inputs in here. So they are really just a number. Okay, so when you click on number and you have you go to the number. And if I switch to the graph, we've got some number inputs there and I need five of them. So the way I worked it out is for these five and you can rename these. So the first one is the length of building. Okay, so that's the overall length. So if it's 30 meters, we're gonna plug in here 
30,000. Okay, the next one is going to be number of bays. So that might be that there's six bays in there. So it's not necessarily the number of frames, but it's the how many gaps uh, are in between each of them. So if we've got two bays, then it's going to have three uh, frames on it. It'll make more sense once we get into it. This one is going to be the overall width of the building. So just from center to center across uh, the Y here. The other one, the other two, so this is going to be the roof height. So this is the, the top, the apex, the apex height. So from the ground level right up to the very top. So not just the wall height, but the very top of it. And this one is going to be wall height. Okay, so then that means we're going to get the wall height and then we're going to get uh, a slanted beam coming up to the roof height and then coming down on the other side. Okay, so length of building is 30 meters. There's six bays. Uh, let's make it 12 meters wide. Let's make the roof height, uh, let's go eight meters and let's make the wall height six meters. Okay. And then what we can do is we can select them all and create a group for that. And the group title will be user inputs. So this is the only thing that you as a user will need to be concerned about. So we can obviously just drag those in and out and, and the group will, group size will change. So before we, we get into sort of the, the depths of it, we still need to have a play around with um, a, a little bit of maths. Okay, so today we're not going to do the actual points, but we're going to do a calculation quickly just to show uh, that we can start getting a range of points. Okay, so now we need a maths operator. So under the operators, we get the division, okay? So this is where we're gonna start getting the number of bays in here. So to connect elements between uh, different nodes in, in Dynamo, so I'm grabbing the length of the building and I click on the arrow and I drag it over to the X. So all this divisor is doing, and I'm gonna pin, this, pin the result, it's taking the X value divided by the Y value and it gives us a value. Okay, and then the number of bays. Okay, so 30,000 divided by six gives us five meters between each bay. If I change that to five, then this changes to six. So then we'll have six meters between bays. Okay, now to take, take that into the length of our building, we want to do what's called a range. Okay, so when you hover your mouse over the range, we want to create a sequence of numbers within a specified range. Okay, so now the range is, gives us, uh, it wants a start, so the default is zero, so we don't need to really do anything there. The end of it is whatever the overall length is going to be. So we're going from zero to 30 meters. Okay, and I'll pin the answer there as well. And how many times do we wanna step to get to that value, which is every six meters. So I'll grab the answer for the divisor or the division calculation, and then we step it. So now I get a range from zero to 30,000, which is the length of the building, stepping it every five meters, and we get kind of this, this list or this array of zero, six, 12, 18, 24 to 30 meters. So if I change the number of bays to six, then you can see our list here changes from zero, five, 10, etc. If we go to seven, you can see we're gonna get these divisors according to this value here, 4285.71, et cetera, et cetera. 
but we want neat neat values here so I'm just going to do it every five meters okay so now we've got some basic maths in there we've got a range and then what we're going to go through tomorrow is populating each of the individual points and then we're going to get sort of a footprint of points along the x-axis for the length of our building points along the y-axis for the width of our building so one for each of the columns one for the top of the columns and one for the roof height there as well which is why we've got the width the roof height and the wall of the building there as well so that will be for tomorrow but hopefully today this gives you a bit of insight into how to start this script and then eventually get to the end of it where uh, we can basically automatically build uh, this portal frame without having to, to do much at the beginning. So thanks for watching. Hopefully it was informative for you. Thumbs up if you liked the video, thumbs down if you didn't. But I will see you tomorrow for a little bit more coding on this. And then uh, eventually I'd say probably, probably uh, not tomorrow, but I'd say maybe on the Wednesday we should get to the end of it and we can start... Uh, another one on the Thursday and possibly even another one on the Friday but uh, stick with it for the week and hopefully you should be a little bit more informed on uh, Advanced Steel and Dynamo in Advanced Steel 2020 and I'll see you tomorrow and thanks for watching.